so you see in the house uh, um obviously uh, it's the first time i've seen it properly so i you know my, maybe my opinion of it's changed maybe it hasn't i think i think to sum up how i feel about it it it, it, it could be amazing it's a beautiful home uh whether or not it stacks up on the numbers uh, you know, I'm not sure. Yet, well. I think you're going to really come in. So, so what do you what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got to deep dive into those numbers. I've got to get the structural engineer around. I think the key is the bones are brilliant. You know, there's quality here. It's a quality building. It's a substantial building in a fantastic location. There's no question of that. I think things like the courtyard garden are beautiful. We can really turn that into a, a selling feature, a wow factor. There's the external lean-to building, which with a new roof and some windows becomes a fantastic conservatory. And getting rid of this wall. You know, we've suddenly opened this up into a much more modern house. Yeah. Um, there's also the potential for a second story extension, which the neighbours have done right next door. Mm -hmm. So that should be fairly simple planning wise. So I think there's minimal planning risk. It's really about the structure. It has that movement stopped. How much is it going to cost to put right or underpin and make sure that the bones are safe? And then, you know, we rip through it and make it look amazing. But bigger picture, though, uh, family home, option A, splitting it to flats, option B, using it as an HMO option C. What do you think? Gut feeling, family home. Okay. Gut feeling, flip, family home, get it done beautifully for a family. Keep the features, keep the beautiful doors. You know, everything that is nice about the internals that we keep, we would have to lose a lot of that if we turned it into flats. And an HMO would, would kind of, you know, I don't think it's big enough for an HMO. We've only got the three bedrooms upstairs. You know, we could probably carve out, you know, we might better carve out another three down here. So we could get up to six bedrooms. The problem with an HMO is that in what is such a high value area, you're going to have a very low yield for it. So actually, I think the property will be more valuable, bricks and mortar, as a family home and sold on. And therefore, you know, that's where the HMO will start to lose its appeal because the capital values are just a bit too high. That's my gut feeling. But we shall see. We'll do a follow up video. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so I kind of slightly think I having looked round it again, Look, I think you don't know you don't know one bit of the equation which I don't which know the price. I do. Yes. So How what, am I what, to know? what do you so because I think it might, that, might, that might influence it. Right. Okay. How much do you think it, it's do you know the Bristol market at all? I know it a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Um, and I know it's quite high capital values, okay. especially this is a good part of it, so isn't it? Four so. bedroom houses around here, okay, in this kind of area, not as big as this, with with less potential, are in the um, 750 to 900,000. That high. Bracket. Yeah. Why? Okay. So a, a wow. big semi, okay, a normal standard big semi yep. around here selling for between 750 to 900. Okay. Cool. So um, this is on the market, and it's one of those difficult ones, really, because it's being sold, you know, an estate sale, uh, as, in, as, in, as in the person uh, has died. And the money's going to charity. So there's a, there's a balance in between wanting to be, you know, get the most money out of it and also of being aware that the money's going to charity. Every deal, Martin, has got to be win-win. That's yeah. how so, I like to do business. So I'm delighted that the money's going to charity. Uh, we, and, and so I probably negotiate less on this than I would on others, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is probably not the best strategy. But it is because no, it's, it's not just We've got to be fair. It's got to be fair. Money. So it is on for offers around <laughs> 725 to 750. Okay. Now... I, I think that is possibly a bit high. Feels a bit high. Because I think we don't know, um, I, I don't, I, we don't know how much it's gonna to cost to do it up. No. And I reckon you're gonna blow, what do you think? What, on the whole refurb? Not, not including a rear extension, including the lean-to, which should be fairly straightforward. Knocking down I a few walls. You've gotta be talking the best part of 100 grand. Yeah. I was going to say because it probably needs rewiring, yeah. probably needs yeah, replumbing, definitely, definitely. Um, and that's just keeping it as a family home. Mm. So, so I reckon that it's 100, 125. Yeah. Mm, if you if you went and did something, that's how far you go. You know, you can you can spend as much as you want to spend, can't you? So, if you got it for seven, to the so you put in a lower offer and they accepted the seven hundred, maybe mm. that's, that's a bit of a cheeky offer. I'm not sure you got to go with got a wedge of stamp duty. Things wedge stamp duty. So you're in it for say seven fifty. And then you're going to spend 100 on it, 850. In terms of a family home, it's up there already, isn't it? It's up there. You might get 900, 950. It's going to be beautiful. I'm not sure the market's going to take much more than that at the moment. All the prices in in Bristol are going the right direction. Mm. 
You know, um, you know what we're up against at the moment is we've, we've, you know, we've come out of the pandemic and mm -hmm. all of that. There's huge pent up demand for family homes. Yeah. And the problem is this is at the peak of that market pretty much. Yeah. And that's what we're up against. We're up, we're up against an owner occupier that will do that work over three or four years in their own time and are yeah. prepared to pay more just to get a nice house in a nice street. Yeah. They are. So that's a tough so, one. So um, I don't think you'd have any problem selling it. In terms of the amount of money that's in it, I think it is, it's an interesting one. However, you skipped over the HMO angle. And I know the market in Bristol. I know there's a huge demand for, for um, really good quality HMOs, as in rooms with um, en suites and all that kind of stuff. And I reckon you've got three bedrooms upstairs. One of them's a bit small for an en suite, but you know, I think you could play around with it. Uh, and then downstairs, you keep this as like the communal area. So I think you could, you could potentially get a five, maybe even a six bed HMO. And uh, with the kind of rents that you're looking at here for an HMO. What would you say uh, is an ensuite suite double? I'd say an ensuite suite double, 600, 700 quid. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're looking Around at- sort of three and a half to four grand. Yeah. So, so 50 grand a year nearly, yeah. 48, 50 grand a year. It's, so. it's going to deliver you seven, eight percent, I would say, yield yeah. as an HMO. So uh, I think, you know, what we need to do, I think, is, is, is we need to find out more. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those key. You, First viewing is always like, yeah. where, are the, where are the, you know, where are the big problems? Where are the big uh, invoices going to come from, <laughs> from the builders? So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not an obvious one, but I think it's one that's definitely worth looking. And I think it throws up some good discussion points. Yes. No, I've enjoyed going around it and I love the bones of it, you know, and that's where you've got to start. If you walk through the door and you just don't feel that it's a building you can add value to, you're kind of, you know, hitting a brick wall from day one, literally. Yeah, yeah. I um, want to make it work. Yeah, it, it's, it warrants it's making it work because it's a beautiful <laughs> building. <laughs> you know, it's just, um, it's a shame it does come down to numbers as well. Yeah, um, I know, you know but, but it has to. Yeah, it's going to get done by someone if yeah. it's not us and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully we can make the numbers work. Mm -hmm. Let's go off and do those calculations. Definitely, okay. And also look at structural survey, maybe. Definitely structural survey. Worth it, I mean, what are we gonna do? I mean, that's, that's gonna be 800 quid, isn't it? 900 quid, do, do, do you pump that money out? I think we have to really, don't we? I, I would say that we offer based on assuming it needs underpinning in the work, because that the cracks are fairly clear there's some work needs doing there. So we can estimate that and we can offer based on that and do the structural work once an offer's accepted and we're under under right. under, under okay. offer. Because otherwise we'll start spending money and, and someone else might just come and buy it from under our nose. You know, I always do this kind of viewing, maybe a second viewing. Maybe on the second viewing we get a build around for their opinion. Very, you know, very cheap quote, rather than a full structural survey. Good idea. And we offer on that basis. And then once we know it's secured, we can start spending some money on the you know proper second level due diligence, you know, getting the solicitors to check out the title and the basic stuff there, get the structural survey done. Actually maybe get the building quotes. You know, we can do all of that before exchange. So we're, we're not fully committed until we've exchanged. Obviously, we want to try and stick to our word and buy it. So if we've offered on it, we wouldn't offer on something we're not prepared to buy. Mm -hmm. But subject to that secondary due diligence going ahead and coming back fairly clean, you know, we know what the problems are. As long as it's not you know, catastrophic mm -hmm. um, on those viewings, then um, we'll buy it. But um, I think we offer before spending a substantial amount of money. That's the better thing to do with investing. So you're not, you know, you could spend 800 quid all day long looking at houses, couldn't you? And then... You haven't bought anything, so. Yeah, good plan. Good. Well, Not, a very useful few hours there. Yeah, really good. good. Enjoyed that. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs>